With this segment, we're going to show you nesting of a design, proportional no, and we actually have a skewed line that we're going to follow here. We've, we've done the skewed line just to give you an idea if you were doing an art quilt, or maybe the quilt shifted or what's called creeping as you rolled it. So the, lin the linear line here kind of shifts up, usually on the right hand side. We've selected the stippling design, so I have the template of the stippling design here, and that's proportional, yes, at 100% in size. We're going to go to the design on Qbot, and we're at start, so we're going to press go. We're doing four-point scaling, so this is really important to pick the four-point scaling in order to let Qbot skew the design to fit in the space. So it says right upper, so we'll move the foot to the right upper. We're going to go to right lower and press the go. Now we're going to move over to our left, upper, and left lower. The design we've selected is 23 inches in length. Our fabric's about 42, maybe 40 inches. When we get to keep proportional yes or no, we're going to say no. And the reason why is that we want to fill this space with the design. And here it's going to ask us, do you want to set the rotation degree? Well, the rotation degree is zero because by picking our upper right and our lower left corners, both sides, um, top and bottom, it's going to skew the design. So there's no rotation needed. So Qbot's scaling the design. The more detail in the design here, the scaling process may take a little longer than just a simple block. The template was printed on the um, template film. It's um, you know a transparency film you could buy at an office supply store printed at 100% in size. Go equals move to start. The reason why I'm talking about the template is we're going to make our own template from the design that we're making right now because its proportion will be no and we don't know how to print that out. So we're going to make it ourselves on the fabric. Fine tune is really not necessary because we've selected the parameters of the block that we're going to do. We're going to get ready to push that go button, but don't forget that good practice we've been getting into is pulling up our bobbin thread. Okay, once we're ready there, push the go button on QBot. I've got the scissors ready to clip those threads and get them out of my way. You may need to remove your bungee cord on the side here because the machine or sometimes even the handles hit it. If you're getting a lot of bounce when you get close to that edge, you could hold your fabric like this while you're quilting. You really don't want to put a bungee on this in the middle of quilting because you'll see the fabric move and a shift in your quilting line. So it's filling that space beautifully. So while it's quilting, you'll need to get your template plastic and either a template pencil or a Sharpie marker to get ready to make a template of what we've just quilted. The other thing you'll notice on your Qbot, it says scaled to 100%. That 100% is the space that we have picked. Our right side was here and our left side was here and you see that Qbot has filled that space with the design. We're now at 57%, so we're over halfway done. Sure makes stippling easy with Qbot. You can see this big, large meander stitch and how easy it was just to select those four points and begin quilting. Two more percent and we're complete. Qbot stopped and on the screen it says quilting done. So the quilt design is done. It asks a question, would you like to quilt another? That would be if we were adding on to this design, but actually we're going to do overlay. That's where the cursor is flashing. So we're going to press the go button. Once we press the go button, we'll move the machine forward, back again, pull our bobbin thread up to the top, clip that. 
we're going to slide the machine all the way back towards where we began. And the reason why is if we told Qbot to go equals move to start from over here, it would hover all the way across the quilt. So we want to be close to where that first quilt pattern was. But before we do that, we have to make a template because we did this in Qbot and we don't have a printed template. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay our plastic there. I'm going to grab a ruler because there's a couple things you can do. If we had a border here, we could measure to make sure that the template was squared off. We can square it off on a line of the quilt, but you want to make sure that you have a visual line to line this back up with. So I'm going to make a line mark here, and I know that the top of the line is lined up with the line on the quilt. Then I'm going to draw just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot, part of the stippling area. What you're then going to do is you're going to shift this down. We need to, to, um, to sew to print just a little bit more because we have to see where it nests. And that's the most important thing is you've got to visually see where it's going to nest. So you may even decide to do this whole piece here. Okay, once we visually now see how to nest that inside of there, that tells us that our start point is right where the last one was. Okay, now we're going to move the machine close to the start point where we began. Go equals move to start on QBot, so we're going to press go. It's going to find its way back. Then what we're going to do is we're visually going to line up whether we're measuring here, we're making sure this straight line, if we had a straight line here, is straight with everything else. And we're going to fine tune down, holding our template in place. And if it shifts, we could move it back. You probably only have to go down. You probably don't have to go right to left. If you do, it's very little. So if we decided to go to the right, it would just be a couple little pushes like that. Don't forget to move your template plastic out. Ask me how I know that when I've sewed through a couple of them. Bring our bobbin thread up to the top. And begin quilting. So nesting of a non-proportional design that's skewed, fitting it into that space is pretty easy with Cubot and your four-point scaling. See how nice it just nests right up inside of this space, not touching or crossing the line. So those of you that know the, the um, theory is you shouldn't have your lines cross on a stippling, this makes it easy. Now you too can say, I can stipple with Cubot or meander. I really enjoy this pattern. I use it a lot. A benefit of it, you should know, is that if you had your binding here and your binding on the other side, you would never really know where your start or your stop point was on your quilt. So we're at 80%. Don't forget, if you need to hold your fabric to keep it still as it gets close to the edge, that's okay. Just don't add a bungee in the middle of your quilting because it does put little divot lines in your quilting. You can see how nice it nests up inside of what we're doing. So, when it comes to doing edge-to-edge -edge designs, nesting, skewed, four-point scaling, it's as easy as that.